I had a dream last night that all my hives died. All the queens, all the all the established hives, the beekeeping was just not going well. I think that's probably my uh, inner concern and worry just making me dream up these things because I do often consider you know the time spent and the I want to do what's right for the bees but I also want to do what's right for my farm and the money that we spend so that dream was uh, well I woke up a little bit sweaty because I was afraid that it was all true but now today it's a good day the sun is out and I'm gonna go check it out see what's going on and hopefully the dream was just a dream and everything's okay my impression so far from just from back here is that there are bees on all three of the splits and it appears that they're going into all three of the splits so that that's a, a good thing hopefully unless someone's being robbed out then that would be a bad thing but let's get over there and check it out all right here we are with the splits I don't see a lot of bees going in and out of the top two. A lot flying around, so hopefully that does not mean that they're dead and they're just being robbed out. Bottom one looks pretty good. Number two looks okay. Well, let's just crack them open and see what's going on. Well, it looks like there's bees working. The first thing I'm going to do is pull this queen cage out to make sure that the queen is not still in there. If she is, I'm sure she would be dead by now. Let's see. I'm going to have to pull one of these frames out. At this point, they're very docile, most likely because they don't have the numbers they need to be aggressive. And I am going to be very gentle pulling this out because I don't know where that queen is, if she's in there at all. Okay, the number of bees looks pretty good. She is definitely not on this frame this is a lot of honey right here so i'm just going to reach in and pull this frame out pull separate it so i can grab this queen cage and the queen cage is indeed empty notice that they ate the candy out of there so she was released the best case scenario is that she was released and she's in there doing her job so let's just see Let's see if we can see her. I also need to make sure that there's no queen cells or queen cups just to make sure that, you know, maybe maybe they, they have her, they're okay, but... Oh, look. Can you see her? There she is. Everything looks like it should be, and she's not, she's not running away. Sometimes queens are very um, shy, and they like to hide in all the bees, but that one right there, she looks good. She's sticking her tail down in there. Okay, now this hive, I don't have to fret with. I see her. She's doing her thing. The best thing I can do is just close this up and let them work. I didn't see any queen cells on that. Let me go ahead and check. I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure there's no queen cells. See if there's any beetles. Look at the beetles in that. Oh my goodness, look at the beetles. That is not good. I'm smashing beetles. Eight days a week. The smash hits, right? All right, man, those are big hive beetles. So my purpose here is just to look at these other, these other two frames, just to make sure that there's no queen cells being developed. And I can do that pretty quickly. Now the bees that are here, they don't have enough really in here to get riled up too much. They don't have enough numbers. But can you hear them? That's them getting excited. They're probably telling me, you're done here, close it up, move along. All right, all right, that's one, that's one good one. I'll move on to this next one. Oh yeah, nice, nice. There's a good number of bees in here. Look at this. 
that that's a lot better than I was expecting. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with that. So I'm going to pull one of these frames out. I'm going to be very gentle because hopefully it's the same case scenario here where I have a successful installation of a queen. I don't know where she is. I don't know what frame she's on, so I have to be very gentle. But again, this end frame, that's a lot of empty comb on that side. A lot of honey on that side. Not a lot of chance that the queen's going to be on that frame because she's going to be in the middle, most likely. She's going to be in the middle. We're just going to lift this one out. This is number two. And I don't see her on that frame. I'm going to slide it all the way over to the left so I can separate and get this queen cage out. And what I want to see is an empty cage. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, another empty cage. Well, they ate that candy all up too, it's gone. All right, so again, I am hoping to pull this frame out and find a beautiful Italian queen doing her job. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna glance and look for queen cells. She's not on this frame. Let me check my beetle trap on this one. Nope, there's ants, but no beetles. Okay, being very gentle. I don't want to I don't want to kill my queen on her first few days. Okay, I don't see a queen on this one, but what I do have, if you can see this, see right there in the middle, the top middle, right there, that's a little queen cup. So I'm just going to smush it out. I don't want that. There's a good number of bees in here and it looks like they're all working, so I'm certainly hoping that I have another successful queen here. Oh, there she is. Look at the top right here. Beautiful, beautiful. Let me give you a better look. Can you see her right there? Now these queens, so far, I mean, I've had queens that they just run and hide. Oh, she's putting her tail down in there. Okay, she's not afraid of me. She's not afraid of the exposure. This is royalty with experience with the paparazzi, I guess. All right, that's it. I'm going to just put all these back. So that was that was nine or ten days. I, I'd have to go back and look, but nine or ten days, I left them alone. They did their job. They got the queen out. She got to work, and it looks like they're going to start building these hives up. I don't have a lot of time. I apologize for the lack of camera angles. I'd love to be super creative with every one of these videos, but sometimes I, I'm on a time crunch. Now I have to move these nukes. Smashing more beetles. We're getting into this one down here. This is the, the big one that was the nuke, not a nuke, the, uh, well, it was the, the seven and five eighths medium. Oh, there are a lots and lots of bees in this one. Before I get in here too far, I wanna show you what's going on here. These bees, you see this, this is a high, there's loads of high, high beetles. This is actually pretty horrible. All these beetles, check out the bees. The bees are attacking those, chasing them out. That is so cool. All right, we're cracking the top on this third split. And they will probably be a little more aggressive because there are a lot more bees. Number one, we gotta make sure that that queen cage is empty. There is so much honey on that. Well, there's two bees in there, but they just, they came in from that open spot. They, they must have thought it was like their little hiding spot. The bees are getting a little excited. So, now remember, all of these workers are still of the previous genetics. I don't blame you. It's okay. I wouldn't like me either. Hopefully I find her on the first one here. Okay, she is not on this side, but there is a little queen cup. A couple of them. So we're just going to take those off. And mostly honey, there's a little bit of brood over here. Actually, that looks like mostly pollen stores. No queen noted. No queen on this side. No queen on this side. 
There's several bees with lots of pollen. You see that orange on their legs? They're bringing in pollen. No queen. No queen cups. Oh, there she is. Woo! This is the one I probably gave a headache the last time. See her on the top there, right there? Beautiful. This inspection is done. I just got to put her back safely and scoot all these frames back over. Sometimes having a camera is actually not a good thing because I can't use both hands all the time. And that's not good for the bees. You know, maybe it's not maybe it's not the camera or me that they dislike. Maybe they don't like you. Yeah, it's not all me. Okie dokie. That's it. Three successful, so far successful. All right, I'm just gonna move these nukes back over here on top where they were. Oh, I forgot the bottom board's not attached. The Daddy Curves Beekeeping Channel, that's the best place for beekeeping mistakes. I'm gonna come back another evening, probably tomorrow evening, and I'm gonna do the inspections on two, four, five, and six. Uh, they haven't been inspected in a while. I've been doing just outside observation, just looking at the hives, making sure people, are, people, bees are coming and going. And they are, so that's good. But uh, I really do need to open them up just to make sure things are cool on the inside. Let's look at this mess real fast. I didn't even really consider that I was making a mistake when I put these out here. Because all of that larva... The, what the small hive beetle does is they go into the ground and they pupate which means that the larva, the little worm, turns into a beetle. Basically by putting them here and chasing them out of the hive what I was doing was chasing them into the ground where they were probably turned into beetles. And the problem with that is I may have created a bigger problem than I needed. Actually I don't need any beetles but I probably created a lot of beetles. All these frames I'm gonna right now I'm gonna take them back to the house if I have freezer room I'm gonna put them in the freezer what that does is allows for everything that's on there everything bad to die and then you can put them back in a hive and the bees will clean it up and reuse comb that's on there the bees work pretty hard making that wax so any wax comb that you can give back to them it's just a really nice gesture they sure are a mess all cleaned up and ready to go back those bees are really persistent. Hopefully after the genetics is changed, there's enough time for those new queens to lay eggs and make a new generation of workers. The genetics will calm down and when I leave a hive, I can leave the hive and leave the bees behind. Right now, I leave a hive and I take about 20 or 30 bees with me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here as I stumble through beekeeping. I hope that you get something out of this, at least entertainment, maybe a tiny bit of education, uh, or maybe it's like a soap opera to you where you just follow the saga and the drama because, man, it can be drama. Oh, and that reminds me. The reason I'm not branding these videos as Golden Sun Beekeeper right now is because the Golden Sun Beekeeper, my son, has decided that he doesn't really like to be on video. He has requested that I don't show him in videos right now at all. So it's kind of hard to have a YouTube channel or um, a YouTube theme, Golden Sun Beekeeper, if I don't have a Golden Sun Beekeeper. So right now you're stuck with Daddy Curves Beekeeping. Uh, I'm going to respect him for not wanting to be in the videos. I'm not putting him in the videos right now. Maybe someday he'll come around and uh, change his mind and we can resume the father-son uh, drama here on the Daddy Curbs farm centered around beekeeping. Anyway, that's enough for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's always a pleasure sharing my farm and my journey, my story with you. Thank you for being a part of that story. I'll talk to you soon.